what I do each year. And we call it this year a fearless forecast for the future, just kind of looking at what I see as some of the trends and issues that are really going to have an impact uh, on us as a profession uh, over the next year or two or even five or more. And the first thing I think I'd just say is the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. <laughs> and this was a quote by William Gibson. And if you're a science fiction fan, you've probably read some of his books. Uh, and I think this is a really, really accurate statement about the future. We're already living it in different parts of the world, just at different paces and at different speeds. So when you see something and you say, it's not going to happen or it's never going to happen or I don't believe it, almost for sure it is happening somewhere right now today. It's just not here yet, but it will be. My first prediction is that gray, meaning gray hair, may save you. And I think this is sort of contradictory to a lot of the stuff that many of us have heard and said uh, over the last uh, year or two about Gen Y. Don't get me wrong, Gen Y is an incredibly important generation. It will change everything that we do, but before it does, we're really going to need the gray. Youth is not going to be your fastest growing segment in the marketplace. In fact, if we look at what's going on out there, there are still more baby boomers than anybody else. And there's going to be more baby boomers than anybody else for the next 20 years. So you're going to have lots and lots of baby boomers, and you're going to have a high level of demand, as we already know. And even if you hired every Gen Y, you wouldn't have enough to meet your needs. And I think we heard that from one or two of the speakers earlier today. So you're going to have to hire baby boomers. On top of that, baby boomers are still in pretty good shape, I think. Yeah. I feel pretty good. You know? Uh, you know, we're still healthy. Life expectancy has gone up significantly. Most of the developed world, 80 or 85 for sure, and people are still pretty healthy and mentally active into those years. In fact, I have a colleague in the U.S. who has founded a job board and is still very active, and he's 87 years old, and he's still going strong. So I don't think that's got anything to do with it. It's more about your mindset. And I think if we look at the social security systems and the retirement superannuation funds around the world, they're not going to survive unless the baby boomers continue to work because there aren't enough young people to fund those programs. So a retirement age of 65 or 70 is just absolutely not sustainable. So you better have a strategy for boomers. You better have a strategy for Retirement may just mean a new job. And I think we're finding a lot of baby boomers in their 50s, 60s saying, you know, I've worked for this particular company or in this career for 25, 30, 40 years. I want to try something new and different. So this is an opportunity for those of you to bring new old people into your organization with a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom, maybe not the necessary particular skill that you need, but probably able to learn relatively quickly. So I think this whole idea of thinking about enticing them into your company for some new job. I think thinking about parallel careers. This person was an accountant for a long time. What could they do for me that might use some of those similar skills? Or vice versa, is going to be a really sound recruiting strategy for the next 20 years or so. How many of you remember the founder of Monster? Jeff Taylor left Monster in 2005, cashed in his stock when it was still really worth a lot of money, and he took it and he founded Eons. Anybody heard of Eons? No. Eons is a job board and a community for boomers. It's doing very well. It's been pretty low key. It's been, been pretty quiet, but he's steadily building up a following here of this boomer community in the U.S and you're this and you're that. And in five minutes I can get on the internet and find out you're not any of those things. You've wasted all your time and energy putting it up there on the website. You're far better to say, yeah, we're this way, but this is what we're doing about it, than you are to try to deny it or pretend that it's not true, because they know. So interactive, immediate, intelligent. Those are kind of, I think, words you need to live by. Immediate. A lot of little examples here. I just threw on a few. This, so I, could, I could literally fill up the whole day with these. PHP Live, instant chat, instant telephone call, 
I'm a candidate, I come to the website, I click a button, it rings the phone on your desk. It's like Skype, if you're familiar with Skype, it's voice over IP, I can chat with you right away. I know at least two companies in the U.S. using this now. It's, it's really hard for recruiters because you know, I don't want to be bothered. Yeah. That's sort of their attitude. Or I'll choose when I talk to you. But the bottom line is you can't do that. You've got to answer the phone when the candidate's ready to talk to you. When you've got a qualified person there, they ought to have access to this phone. Now, you don't stick this on the public first page they see. You, know, you put this somewhere after there's been a qualification process, and you know they're probably a pretty good candidate. Okay? So you've got to use these tools intelligently. Jobs and pods. I think we heard in the panel if you're in there talking about podcasts and the power of these, that people like to download information about your company. It can be a video podcast or, or, a, or an oral podcast. But you know, I may just want to listen to this on my, uh, on my car on the way home tonight. I might want to just listen to this uh, before I go to bed tonight. I don't necessarily want to have to sit in front of this computer and read about your company. I'd much rather listen about it. But this is a choice. Some people want to read, some people want to talk to you on the phone, and some people want to broadcast. And you need to give them choice. That's the bottom line. They need to have choice. And then there's jobs blogs, and we've talked all about this. And Microsoft is one of the best examples of good blogging. And this is another blog from another part uh, of Microsoft, that, uh, not Heather's part. And then Twitter. So I asked you yesterday morning to twit <laughs> or to get on Twitter. Anybody here get on Twitter? Okay. A few people. Okay. Anybody planning to get on Twitter? Okay. Now, you know, why would you get on Twitter? What does Twitter do for you as a recruiter? This is, again, a simple way to give a 140-word message to people about something you're doing. Now, I think you get on Twitter to build followership. That's what I call it. If you're talking about your company, if you're twitting specifically to a group of potential candidates about things going on in your company, CEO just made a great speech, sales up 30%. That goes, that twits out to your followers, okay? Just got a new patent on X, goes out to all these followers. You twit, everyone, you get, you get 30 people in your company twitting. And candidates come to your website and they say, yeah, I think, I'll, 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 I think I will follow this company and their twits. Because I'm gonna learn in an SMS <laughs> environment. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, but uh, I'm going to listen in this SMS environment to what's going on in this company and what people are saying. And so all of a sudden, these people are developing a relationship with you. They're getting to feel like they know you. And if you talk to them or call them up, they're going to say, yeah, I know all about your sales, your patents, your new products, all this stuff, because I've been following you on Twitter. A powerful tool if it's used right. And a stupid tool if it's not like so many other things. So the strategy is build relationships. I don't care how you build them, but technology is part of relationship building. And you better build virtual relationships. 